So we want to start this off by putting a nice even coat on all of our pieces of material that we have here. We're putting a really thin coat on each one, but we do want to make sure that all of the surface area is covered. And this is just a JB Weld 5-minute epoxy that I'm using right now. And the layers are black G10, copper, and then black palm. So the trick here is to use these blue clamps that I have right here to keep everything in position while I'm using these to clamp everything down. Because what will typically happen is you start clamping this down, if you haven't squeezed out some of the epoxy, whenever you go to clamp these down, the layers will start shifting and squeezing out and moving. So you want to get these clamped into place so that it already starts pushing it down so you can start tightening these and nothing will really shift. So something that I've just learned throughout the process of doing this. But we want to be able to get this nice and tightened down. Not too tight because we don't want to squeeze out all the epoxy. But we want to make sure there's no real gaps or waves in these. So right there, that's all we need to do. Everything's good to go. And we'll come back tomorrow once these are dried. So I draw this outline on here just so I have a reference to go back to as I'm drilling the holes just in case something slips or slides in this process and moves around I can get it back to roughly where I needed it to be. We're going to be drilling 3 16 inch holes through this because our pins are 3 16 micarta pins. Now we need to go ahead and start shaping the front of the scales. This is the area that is going to be meeting the ricasso and you really can't work this area after you mount these scales to the knife itself because they're going to be up against the blade in the ricasso area and you don't want to get that all scuffed up and scratched up. Now we're going to be using the 5 minute JB Weld epoxy again. We're going to do a light coat on everything just like we did before. The only difference is we're just making sure that we're going inside the pinholes and that we are getting epoxy inside all of these little divots that I drilled into the back side of the scales to just increase the mechanical bond. And I do a light coat on everything and then go through and put the pins in and slide everything together 
so that I'm not trying to get epoxy around all of the different pieces. And you do want to make sure that whenever you are clamping these down that you do not over tighten. You want to get them nice and snug, but you're not trying to squeeze out all of the epoxy. And then we're going to go ahead and clean any of the squeeze out on the Ricasso area just to make sure that we have a nice crisp line where the scales meet the Ricasso and we don't have a bunch of epoxy gummed up right there. Now it's time to go ahead and start shaping our scales. Now, one of the things that I always tell people is as you're doing this, make sure you're putting it in your hand over and over and over again to make sure that it actually is comfortable because you can make a beautiful set of handles or knives, but if they're not comfortable, no one would want to use them. So it's got to be comfortable first thing and then look good second and I'm doing a real simple shaping on this one I'm just kind of rounding everything and giving it a slight taper towards the belly just so that it has nice ergonomics but is a nice sleek simple design Shockingly enough, not everything needs a Coke bottle handle. And as I'm doing this, I am using a used 36 grit ceramic belt because it tends to not burn the wood. You know, the higher grit you go, the easier it is to burn the wood. And my sanding progression here, I went from 220 grit to 320 grit to 500 grit and I ended at 800 grit on these scales because I wanted a really smooth finish on the G10 and copper and by default would give me a smooth finish on the wood. We're going to use a soft buffing wheel with a green compound to buff everything out. So I'm going to buff the scales and go ahead and buff the blade before I start sharpening it. And when it comes to sharpening it, we're going to get our secondary bevel ground in with this 400 grit belt right here on the 2x72 and all we're really doing is just starting that bevel so that we can then use the higher grit belts to refine it. This belt right here is a 1x30 belt that is 600 grit and I end up doing a 600 grit and an 800 grit belt on the 1x30 just to make sure we can get a nice good burr and once we've developed that burr we're going to go ahead and switch to this leather stropping belt right here and this makes quick work of this burr and knocks it off so that we have a nice clean razor sharp edge left when it's all said and done.
Well guys, what did y'all think about the pictures there? Uh, I like doing that because y'all actually get to see a close-up of the knife and the things that go into it. I'm really excited about this. I love the overall design of this knife. I think that the black palm turned out really cool, looking like cable. And then going with that, contrasting into the mild steel, the copper and cable, and the 15 and 20 on the edge. I just think that this has a ton of contrast and everything looks crazy on it. I love the way everything turned out on this knife. Just super happy. The black liners, the copper liner, the black palm on there, and then just everything contrasting. <sighs> I'm really interested to see what y'all think about this overall package now that you actually get to see it in all of its glory. Uh, I will tell you, I'm going to be EDCing this, so I'm going to take it out for a month and just abuse the hell out of it, and which is probably crazy because this is a lot of work to go into a knife that I'm going to just use to do all kinds of stuff. And most people who would get a knife like this from me would probably just put it on a shelf on a display because of how crazy it looks. Not not many people are gonna go out and just EDC a, a custom knife like this, but I am because I make knives to use. I don't make knives to sit on a shelf. You know, I, I love the aspect of knife making. You see a lot of people who make knives that just look like display pieces. I, I'm going to use this, okay? <laughs> so it's going to be pretty cool. I'll show you all what it looks like after a month of use. But uh, this thing is beautiful, and I'm absolutely in love with it. Now, we've got this build done. So what you all are going to see next is the Shop Talk Tuesday episode. Where we're working on the handle scales for the giveaway knife. And then we're going to be going into the completion of the Damascus knife. So we're going to have the handle scales done, just like you all saw in this. So everything that we just did here, we're going to, you know, put the handle scales on. We don't have to really layer anything or make anything. So it's purely going to be uh, getting the handle scales attached to the knife, shaping them, putting an edge on it, doing some stuff with it. And uh, I'm going to do a, a few different things with the cutting with that particular knife. But I'm excited about that build. I'm excited about the builds that we have that are coming up. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell because we have a ton of stuff that's going to be coming up. But guys... That's the end of this one. That's the end of this build right here. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I'll catch y'all next time.